In augustus ook een storytelling festival. Een van de mensen daar is Maureen Watson. Die gaat ons dadelijk in het Engels iets vertellen over Australië. En de historie zoals de Aboriginals die zien. We vinden het jammer dat de Gay Games voor ons als lokale omroep eigenlijk niet toegankelijk zijn. We mogen wel kijken, maar geen opnames maken. Want de organisatie heeft de rechten verkocht aan IDTV die dat over de wereld verspreidt. En wij vissen dus naast dat net. Dat is eigenlijk jammer, want de gemeente geeft een behoorlijke subsidie aan de Gay Games. En op deze manier kan dus de Amsterdamse burger er eigenlijk geen kennis van nemen. Een beetje een vreemde organisatie die de gemeente eigenlijk wel te verwijten valt. Maar nu dus eerst Maureen Watson als voorproefje van storytelling tijdens de Gay Games. Met een aboriginal verhaal in het Engels. Watermoolie. My name is Maureen Watson and I am an aboriginal Australian. I would like to tell you a story. A story of a long, long, long time ago. Way, way, way back. Back through the swirling mists of time to the very beginning when there was nothing except the wise spirits. And they decided that they would make a special place. They would make a place that was so special it would know only the touch of soft padded feet. There would be no creatures with sharp cutting hooves. They decided they would make a place where there were no creatures that would eat human beings so that the people of this land could go out on the darkest night in the thickest bush. They need never look over their shoulder to see if some creature was creeping up to gobble them up for dinner. They decided they would make a land where there were no problems with garbage, with rubbish dumps, with trash heaps. There would be no tin or iron or steel. Their cooking pots they would not have. They would not have the metal on their dwellings. They would cook on the hot coals and the ashes. Their shelters would be made from the bark and the leaves of the trees. There would be no big holes gouged in the earth for the mines. They would have a place, a special land, where no child ever had to read or write or spell or even learn the ABC because the children would learn the same way that a baby learns. They learn by using their eyes, by using their ears, by using their brain, their mind and working things out. They never have to carry books or paper or pencils and that was the way our country was made. The wise spirits each went off into all of the different directions and from within themselves they took and they fashioned the land. They reached back down within themselves and then they fashioned the people of the land. Once again, from within their own spirit, they fashioned the birds of the air, the animals of the land, the fish of the sea, and the little creatures that lived close to the earth. And so it is that every Aboriginal child, when they walk on their land, they walk with respect because they know part of their spirit is there in that land. They do not tip their rubbish into the waters, the rivers, the lakes, the ocean, because they know they would soil their own spirit. They cannot rip the branches from the trees needlessly because they know they injure their own spirit. They can lie and watch the birds fly among the clouds and they can experience the very same sense of freedom because they know part of their spirit flies up there with the birds. They know 
They can pick up the stone, the rock, the pebbles. They can feel the hardness and the strength and the stillness of those rocks and those mountains. And they know when they have to be strong, when they have to be still, when they have to be hard, they can be because part of their spirit also is in those mountains and those rocks. And so it is. The Aboriginal child grows knowing that they have a relationship with everything in their universe, with the living and the non-living, with the sun, with the moon, with the stars, with the wind that blows through the clouds and the trees that sway, with the lightning that flashes in the storms, with the land beneath their feet. The child grows up knowing she is part of all of these things and everything in her world is a part of her. And because of that respect and that balance and that harmony, Aboriginal people see the big picture and from that we take the law and the law balances out as the animals balance out with the elements, the rain, the wind, the waters, the fire, everything balances out and the law is made for the good of the people and the child knows the law is part of the big picture. So it is today. Even so, we may speak a foreign language, but we have embraced that foreign language. We have changed the meanings of the words and we make it ours. We may bear different names. Our skin may be a different colour. We may have the blood of other nationalities. But we are still Aboriginal. And so we still know the relationship between us and all things in our universe, the living and the non-living. And above all, we know that we, the people who live today, we will become the ancestors of the children of the future. And we know that today we have a choice. We can give our children honourable ancestors, ancestors who stood up for what they believed in and like the ancestors who went before us we will be looked upon with pride and sometimes I wonder what kind of ancestors will you give your children I wonder